What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video, Cup of Coda 1. So we're going to start today with creating a uh, fake data set where we already know what the true... What do we start now? Let's, uh, let's go with the green here for now. We're going to start with the data, uh, a fake data set where we, we know what the true relationship is between the input to the target variable. So we're not going to try to do any estimation or prediction. We know what this should be. Uh, and that's the whole point of the fake data set. And that's going to help us to find a model that can accurately approximate the true state of the relationship between the input and the target variables. Uh, so we're going to have a predetermined mapping function. And then we're going to choose the x and it's going to generate the y. Uh, very simple thing here. We're going to start some coding in just a moment. Uh, we're going to add some random noise to the data. So again, we're going to have we're going to have a known mapping function. We're going to have a known mapping function. So there's no guess to guessing what's going on here. We're going to know exactly what it is. We're going to choose the X and that's going to give us the Y. So we're going to have, that's going to be predetermined. We're going to add noise because remember the uh, one of the best ways to choose your algorithm is which is going to best separate your signal to noise. Uh, capture more of your signal and less your noise. That's going to also help with over and under fitting. And then we're going to try different algorithms uh, and compare their performance. To, and by comparing their performance, uh, performance is measured how? Performance is measured by the highest signal and the lowest noise. Not too crazy, right? So what the mapping function we're going to use? We are going to use Da, da, da. Let's just throw this out. Our mapping function is going to be quite simple. Y is going to equal the sine of X. So no, no heavy math here. And all we're going to do to add noise to this, this is our mapping function. And then we're going to have our mapping function with noise. So you can imagine it's going to be y equals the sine of x. And we're going to graph all of this as well, so a little bit more intuitive for you, plus noise. So we're going to have, over here, we have our 100% our known. Uh, any x we put in, it's going to calculate the sine and give us a y. So we have our input, and then we're going to have our target variable. And we're going to know exactly what it should be. So we should get 100% with this algo. That's nothing crazy. Over here, we're going to have, again, uh, almost like supervised, where we know what our output should be based on our input, but we're adding a level of noise here. And the algorithm's job that we're going to be using, the model, the models that we're going to be testing is uh, based on these inputs and this noise that we're going to generate, how well can the model listen to this and ignore this and give me the most accurate output? And we're gonna we're gonna have our known to compare it to, so we can say let you know just as an example, let's say for an x uh, of two, we got a y of ten. Uh, then over here, if we put an x of two and we get a y of four, we know that this model sucks because it's listening way too much to the noise and it's not paying attention enough to the signal, and that and so we're getting a huge discrepancy here. And then what we can do is we can compare this, we can calculate this error, and we can compare it to our known. And then we'll, you know, then getting a little ahead of ourselves, back propagation and so forth. But um, so what we're going to do, we're going to jump over now to the coding aspect of this. So we're going to open up uh, PyCharm. Let me get that up here. All right, let's get my keyboard ready. Got a little error on loading, no problem. I was doing some color testing. So. Uh, first and foremost, everything we're going to do in terms of, of this, I, I told you guys before, we're going to be hitting a lot of NumPy and, and sklearn and so forth. So we're going to uh, import NumPy. And I'm a little, there we go. All right, I just don't like things where they don't have to be. So we're going to import NumPy. And the reason it is grayed out is because we haven't actually called uh, anything from NumPy yet. So we're going to cre uh, import NumPy as NP, so we can call it as NP. And what I want to do first is we want to create an evenly spaced, and evenly spaced in NumPy is called a line space. We want to create a list of 100 numbers. Um, and these 100 numbers, we want them spaced from 0 
to 2 pi. So pi is 3.14 times 2, and that'll give us our 0. So roughly 0 to 6 and change. We want 100 numbers from 0 to 6, essentially, uh, evenly spaced. So to do that, we're just going to create a variable x. We're going to call numpy uh, by np dot, and we're going to call line space, and that's essentially telling that we want these numbers to be evenly spaced, right? And if you look at the documentation, you'll be able to see exactly how the arguments that we have to pass through here. So we're starting at 0. And we want to go to a max of 2 times pi. Now in numpy, we can do this, np.py. And that's what Nessio says here, numpy.core.umath. So we're calling the pi function. So now the computer knows we're doing 2 times 3.14. And we want that, we want 100 numbers spaced. So again, line space is telling us that we're doing, uh, we, numpy, we're using the evenly spaced aspect of it. We want to go from 0 to a maximum of two times pi, and we're calling pi from the MP library, and we want 100 numbers, so evenly space 100 numbers. Uh, if you wanted to see what that looked like, you could simply just do this, and we could run, run ML1, and we'll get it in the output. And I have MP has no attribute line space, because I put that in wrong. And that was my mistake. I put an E, and it should have been no E. So once we do that, I'm just going to bring this output up here for a moment so you can see. It prints it out in this function. Let me open this up a little bit so we can see it better. There we go. So we printed out our numbers. So there's 100 numbers here, and they're spaced from 0 to 2 times 3.14, and they're evenly spaced. So if you wanted to check that out by hand, you absolutely could. But you can see we go higher at 6.28, and we're starting at 0. So we have 100 evenly spaced numbers from 0 to 2 pi. Let's bring this out of the way just for a moment. Now what we want to do is we want to create a random seed. So a random seed is so that you can replicate the results because we're using we're going to be using the random function through uh, at certain parts of this. And if I run it now uh, and it gives me a random generated number, then I run it again later, it'll give me a different random generated number. But by setting a seed, we'll always get the same random results because of, in terms of the random feed that we're using. So we're going to use that uh, to generate the noise in, in this example. So we're just going to do np.random.seed, and we're going to use the code 321. So now every time we run this, if we run a seed at 321, we'll get the same output uh, from that we, were, that we were anticipating. Now we're just going to define a variable noise. So what do we want for noise? We want it to be uh, a random distribution of numbers, and we want it to be a normal distribution, if you will. So that's just going to be numpy np.random. And we want it to be a normal distribution. And we have to tell NumPy now from what to what and how do we want it to be fixated. So we're going to start at 0. I want the random distribution to be at a, at a rate of uh, 0.5. Go up to the max of 100 there. So um, all we're doing here, this is generating noise with 100 random numbers from a normal Gaussian distribution centered at 0. So here we go. We're centering at 0. I'm getting 100 numbers, and I want you to think of a bell curve almost. And the spread or the width or the standard deviation of that distribution is going to be at a half. And again, we're going to be graphing all this, so it'll make more sense to you. Um, so now we have uh, we have x and we have the noise. So if you remember a function, which is y equals sine times x plus the noise. Uh, so now we have to calculate the target variable y based on the mapping function sine x plus the noise that we just showed earlier in the movie. So the way that we're going to do that is, as you would anticipate, y equals what? np dot sine of x. Again, we're just calling np. We're using, I guess sine is already a defined function within the NumPy library. And what are we doing with that? We're adding, oops, a daisy, the value that we're going to have for noise at that particular um, x. So now we have our function for y. We have our mapping function with the noise in place. Now that we have an x and we have a y, we can create a data frame via the pandas. Because remember, pandas is how we're going to manipulate our data frames. And we're going to do this using a dictionary. So we can have a key value pair where the key is the column title and the value is going to be the value column. Uh, so how do we do this? Quite simply, we have to, well, first off, we're going to have to import pandas as pd. It's kind of the common nomenclature we're going to use. And we're going to call our data frame, or df is going to be our data frame. So we're going to call pandas. And then we're calling data frame. Note there is a capital D and a capital F when you're calling 
that. And we're going to have open and close uh, parentheses. And then again, I said we're going to do this as a dictionary so we can have our input and our target, right? Because that's what we have. We have two pieces here. We have our input, which is X, and our target, which is going to be the Y. So to do that, we're just going to create a dictionary. And I'm sorry, the string is going to be input. That's going to be our key. And we're going to close that off. And then we're going to put our, our value. What's our value for the input? Well, that's just going to be X, whatever we calculate uh, for X, which in this case is, is, our, is, is MP is going to be filling in those X values that we have in our line number four up top. And then our second piece, again, is going to be the target. And what are we using for that? Well, that's our Y. That's using our mapping function plus the noise to get to the Y value. That's going to close off our dictionary. And if you wanted to see what those are going to look like, you could just print out the DF head if you wanted to see oops, Daisy, what that was going to do. So it's actually good, good practice. Let's do that now. We'll call DF head, run this. I want to make sure we're not printing X anymore. I don't want to see all of that. That was a little crazy. So here we can see we have now we created a, a data frame using pandas. We have an input and target. So we named our key and our keys, and we have our values. We have one, two, three, four, five. Now, why did it only print out the first five? Again, we're indexing at zero, because DF head, the head of default is five. If I were to put a 10 inside those parentheses, then I would have gotten 10 rows. I would have gotten 10 observations. And where are these numbers coming from? Well, again, we're telling input, the column input, it's taking in X, and the column target is taking in Y, and that X we defined up top here, and the Y we defined over here. These are inputs into our mapping function, and these are our target outputs, the Y. So now we have, I oh, will keep it at 10. Not like these computers can't handle that. So now that we have, uh, we, we printed out the head of our data frame, we can see that we're pretty much aligning everything properly. We want to take a look at our data set. So to do that, we're going to plot it. So how are we going to plot this? Well, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to first, we'll do some scatter plots and we'll add some lines to it. So what we're going to do is, excuse me. Oh, we're going to have to, Bring in Matplotlib soon, aren't we? Yeah. So we're gonna have we're gonna do a PLT. Now we're gonna call in scatter plots. And now what we're doing is we're gonna be calling the data frame. So from the data frame dot x, this is how I'm gonna be. Uh, this is these the, the arguments that we're putting in into PLT. And I need to do that. I need to import Matplotlib as PLT. So now what we're doing is the arguments that we're saying, I'm telling, I'm telling uh, Python, I want to create a, a PLT, I'm calling PLT, I'm calling matplotlib. We want to scatter plot. And the two arguments I'm going to use are the df.x and the df.y. So this is going to be the, the x and this will be the y in terms of the graphing that you're going to see. And the df dot is calling our data frame. So df.x and df.y is going to be pulling in these parameters that you see down below here. So this is data frame x and this is data frame y. So we have our, we have our uh, from the data frame, we have our inputs and we have our target variables. And then uh, if, we wanted, if we wanted to see this, so let's say we said uh, PyCharm, it's a little bit different how you did this if you were going to do this on, say, um, Jupyter Notebooks. So coming back into it here, we had uh, in the data frame, when we created the dictionary, we gave it the key of input and target and the value of x and y. So what I had to do down here by accident scatter from data frame, I'm actually calling the input for x and I'm calling the target for y. Now I'm in PyCharm, so I have to do plt.show open and close, and then I can run the code and it should, there we go. So it gives me my inputs and outputs. That's my DF head of 10 here down here that I printed. So now what we have is we have our x and our y indices and you can see we're centered at zero here for a normal distribution and these are our random numbers that we generated but this is the mapping of our function y equals mp dot sign x plus noise because again that's what we created our y this was our y and our x was the randomly generated variables from zero to uh two times pi 100 variables in between so this is the mapping of our y and our x so this is the random distribution here that we're going to be utilizing now if we wanted to on top of that Let's add a little bit, let's add another level of, uh, of fun to this. So what we can also do is we can, we can put uh, a line plot mapping the function um, without the noise so we can see what perfect is. So if we were going to do that, I would simply just do, excuse me, we're going to plot. And again, this is just going to be the df.input. 
but the y is going to be different here. I just want to map np sine of x. That's all we're going to be mapping. I'm sorry that we have to use the data frame for this. The data frame of x, that's all I want to map on this. And I'm going to close this off and we're going to give it a color. We'll say color equals, uh, we'll do black, which I believe is k. syntaxly appropriate. Let's see if we get our graph again. Nope, we get an error. We have no attribute xdf. I did it again. Input. That is what I'm using for my x. There we go. Beautiful. So now we have a, a line here. Let's see if green's a little bit better. Just uh, for visual. It might not be. All right, I'll take it. Just for fun, let's see if r is actually red. Uh, I just lost you. Sorry about that. Let's bring that back into play. Just kind of resize the window here to a degree. Bring it down. There we have. Oh, so we can get red. All right, excellent. So we'll actually give it as red. I think that's going to give us the best color combination right now. So now the red is mapping the, I'm sorry, it's graphing the actual mapping function of y equals sine of x. So it's kind of our, our perfect arrangement, the one that we first saw, our, our ideal model, where we know exactly what the input and output would be. And then we have a randomly generated pieces that are the same mapping function that we have in red, but this is plus the noise. So in an ideal world, if you had the blue dots as input data, you could have an algorithm that would find this perfect red line and know what it would ignore. So if you had a degree of, a degree of forgiveness of a certain distance, you might be able to say above and below this perfect curve, except that and that above a perfect curve, which might even be the way to design a good algorithm if you could have a perfect mapping. One way to eliminate noise would be to ignore what's above and below that particular graphing function. But again, not everything is going to be, uh, not that this is not linear, but not everything is going to be linear. Not everything is going to be as clean as this, as, as you're going to see. So some pieces I want you just to recall is one, uh, we're getting 10 outputs because we have, uh, we put 10 in the DF head. Um, and the places I was, I screwed up when I started doing this was when I was calling the data frame, you have to call the key, not the value. So it has to be df.input or df.target. Um, and then here when I was the plot, the, the line plot that I was doing, so the scatter plot with the blue dots and the plot was going to be the red. It was the df.input because that was clean. We created those randomly generated. And then we had to, we couldn't do df.target because the target, as you can see, is connected to a value of y and y equals mp.signx plus the noise. I wanted to get rid of the noise for a perfect mapping, so that'd be mp.sign df.input. Color just being R for red, K black, W white. And then with PyCharm, I have to throw a plt.show in, open, close, otherwise I'll never see the graph. So now that we have our fake data set, and again, we have our perfect sine wave being our perfect relationship between the input X and the target variable Y. And then we have our similar function with the noise in place. What we want to do is we want to, we're, next we're going to apply some models and we're going to see how well they can predict the target variable Y from a given value from the input feature of X. So given these X's that we have down here below on the X axis, how well can it predict a Y that is remotely close? So if I was at one and a half here for an X, how close would I actually get to getting a generated Y um, in, in for, the, for the output? And then we're going to just, we're going to compare models. So I'll tell you right now, some models are going to be very rude and uh, it will try to find different ways to split the data, different ways to try to find your proper input target relationship. Again, signal to noise ratio. And then we're going to find which model is going to give us the better predictive value in this particular case of uh, with the mapping function.